is king of the universe. God is king. He loves everyone of us. Welcome to the TOG Insider. King of the universe. Brought to you by the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ in Philadelphia. In each Insider program, we will take you behind the scenes of the truth of God. We'll visit our temples and the people that make the truth of God happen. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of this, The Truth of God Insider. Uh, my name's uh, Brother Dan Thompson. I'm the media director of the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, as you know, this program is designed to give you a little bit more insight into what's happening here at the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ and the ministry of Pastor Jennings. Um, today, we're going to go uh, behind the scenes a little bit further and uh, talk to one of the brothers at the church and have a short conversation with him. His name is Brother Ernest Evans. Welcome, Brother Evans. How are you? Thank you. Good to, good to be here. It's always good being in the, at the First Church because I, I feel safe here. Good, good, good. Tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you uh, came in contact with the First Church. Well, um, it was years ago when I was about 17 years old mm -hmm. and I was working at the poultry market and a few ladies came in there and they were, men they were members of the church with Bishop Johnson. Mm -hmm. And it was Hannah and her two daughters and another man named um, Clarence Benford. And we're there working, and I'm 17 and we're there working, and this man is on the radio and they're playing this man. I says, I says who is this man? She said, that's Bishop Johnson. So I, I was looking at it and I said, you know, and I'm from South Carolina and I'm in Baptist, been a little child raised in the Baptist church. And we're pretty, if we weren't in the fields working, we were in church. There was no place to go. If we weren't in the Baptist church, we were, we were in the fields working. And my dad's farm, that's what we did. Mm. And I, I'm pretty, I know a little bit about the Bible because that's all we were doing in church. Mm -hmm. And here I am working with Hannah and her two daughters and Clarence Benford, and they are from Bishop Johnson's church. And I'm hearing him mm. on the radio. All, all day we're working and they played Bishop Johnson. And all I can remember that man saying is that if you don't pay attention to the Lord, you're going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. And I listened to Bishop Johnson, listened to him, mm. and I came to a conclusion at 17 years old. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, that man is right. That Bishop Johnson, ever who he is, he's right. Mm -hmm. And if I have to be that good, I'm just going to go to hell because mm -hmm. I can't be that good. <laughs> That was your conclusion. That was my conclusion. conclusion at the time, and you were just 17 years old. Yes, and how yeah. I, and, and years later, you know, I'm, I'm 55 years old, mm. and, and my mother says, you got to come to church with me, Ernest. Mm -hmm. Well, I says, oh, Mom, she says, you got to come to church. So, you know, I, I, I'm on, I go to Frankfurt Avenue, mm -hmm. and, I'm, and I'm in church, and I'm sitting there, and Pastor Gino comes on the pulpit, and he's preaching there, and he says, if you don't pay attention to the Lord, <laughs> you're going to go to hell. I said, oh, God, I'm back here. <laughs> I thought I left it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm still here. I'm Can't still see. here. Couldn't escape. So I'm back here. I'm 55 years old. But, 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 mm -hmm. I was ready. Yeah. Well, I wasn't correct. Yeah. But I was ready. Yeah. Well, tell tell us a little bit about your your mother. How how would you describe her and her influence on your life and in introducing you to holiness? Mom is a Baptist person, mm -hmm. a really Baptist lady. I you know she brought me to church. In fact, she did some things with me when I was a kid and. Mm -hmm brought me to church all the time. Mm -hmm. And my father, who never went to church, mm -hmm. go to church. I said, Dad, you don't go. Don't say anything to me. You just go. Mm -hmm. 
that my brothers and I went to church every Sunday. And there was a woman preacher <laughs> named Miss, 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 her name was Miss, Miss Gladys. Mm -hmm. And she, every <laughs> Sunday, uh -huh. and she was very good, by the way, uh -huh. and she taught us. She was, she was a white lady, and she had a little mole right there. And she was very attractive, and she taught us Sunday school all the time while we were very young in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And mother, just mother was a seamstress, and my dad was a longshoreman. And uh, they, you know, they, they were kind of like, you know, we had a, just an apartment in Philadelphia. That's all we had. I went back to school back and forth. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. uh, mom brought me to church, and, and uh, she, in fact, I was the first person mm -hmm. that introduced her mm -hmm. to Bishop Johnson. Mm -hmm because I told her what was going on. Mm -hmm. And later, she's in the church that was the same church that Bishop Johnson was. And the same, this man, how old was he, 32 years old or 33 years old when I came to church? And I'm hearing this old man out of Pastor Gino saying, mm -hmm. if you don't listen to the Lord, you're mm -hmm. gonna go to hell. And that was, <laughs> so I was back. Yeah, yeah. And so, I was ready to take the journey at that time because I had some problems. Yeah. And I, I just didn't know, there was no place else to go for me yeah. but to church and see mm -hmm. if I could work out the problems that I had because yeah. I had a lot of them. Yeah. So at that time, you actually had made it up in your heart already to start walking with the Lord when you m ran into the first church of our Lord Jesus Christ. No. All right. I just knew that I need to mm -hmm. investigate what I didn't want to recognize when I was 17, mm -hmm. but I know it was upon me once again. Mm -hmm. And I know that I had to go in that direction because if I didn't, I don't know what would have happened to me, yeah. but I, I, I needed guidance yeah. and it wasn't going to come from any psychiatrist mm -hmm. or, or someone or, or an analyst. It wasn't going to come from them. Yeah. And I know the only place it could come from is from God. And this time, I realized by listening to the message that was being preached by Pastor Jennings that I was back at Bishop Johnson and Bishop Johnson's best student <laughs> was teaching me yeah. what I heard from Bishop Johnson, but a more advanced mm. form of message that mm -hmm. I was receiving mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you made it up in your mind to to walk with the Lord then? When, when exactly did that happen? I was sitting, I was sitting in the church and every time I heard the word, it was like they were talking to all my faults, hmm. all the things that I was doing and, and uh, the preacher said, um, Pastor Jenny said, would you like to be baptized? And I r raised up and everyone watched me and I sat back down again because I wasn't ready to do it. I wasn't dressed the proper way mm -hmm. to get baptized. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know that his birthday was the following week. Yeah. I said, I'll do it then. Yeah. So I went down south and saw my grandfather who passed away. Mm -hmm. And I came back to church that, at that point and I, and I was baptized. Mm -hmm. you know. Do you remember the exact day or the month? I know that. It was February coming yeah. up, Yeah. February coming up, and I think it might have been February 17th, Yeah. 25 years ago, February coming up, Yeah. and that's yeah. when I was baptized. And believe me, it was a very difficult journey for me, mm -hmm. very difficult journey, and to get, to be going to church, and I knew that the only way that I could get it together is to never stop going to church. Yeah because uh, realizing that the things that are inside of me and all the iniquity and all the things that I'm dealing with and still dealing with, yeah. that I have to be in church yeah. all the time yeah. Yeah. because it's going to take a very strong gospel to take care of the things that I'm dealing with because yeah. Yeah. Brother Dan, and I do realize from my teaching, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to, to come to church all my life for 25 years yeah. and when the Lord comes for the church and I'm on the outside of the church looking in yes. and all 
of the saints have left and gone with the Lord, and I'm still looking and watching them take off, and I'm still standing outside looking in because I, knew, I know that standing on the outside, I'm just not going to be in the snow and the cold looking up yeah. because the monsters are coming to get me yeah. <laughs> and they're going to take me with them yeah. Yeah. and I'm going to be lost. Yeah. That's what I worry about yeah. more than anything. In fact, in just around now, 25 years later, still things to clean up. And I, and I, I come to church desperately yeah. to work with those things that are attached to me and I'm attached to those things. Yeah. And I ask God to come to help me to, to I want to be delivered. Yeah. I, want to, I, I want the gift of the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue. Yeah. And when the Lord comes, I want to be with him. I don't want to be lost and left here. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's certainly something that we all have to strive to do. Um, it's a very, very sincere walk, as you know. Um, and you being the person that you are, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's great challenges that you face that some of us will never face. Um, can you, would you like to talk about some of those things uh, here? Well, or? well I, I do know that. Yeah. I do know that. This walk yeah. with God the right way, yeah. not talking about the wrong way, the right way. Being here, I realize that I have the extreme opportunity of hearing the truth. It comes I hear the truth. Pastor Gino, Pastor Gino's voice comes. He preaches what comes through him. God's, God's word comes through his mouth by way of the Bible. He says, and I hear no one else say this, he, someone says something and Pastor Gino says, Let's see what the Lord's got to say about this. And he opens the Bible mm -hmm. and he explains it. You might not like it, mm -hmm. but he tells you. So let's see what the Lord's got to say about this. Let's see what the Lord Jesus has to say about this. Let's see what God's got to say about that problem that you're asking me about. And not only he, does, he, does, he do, does he do that, he gives that to every minister that preaches the gospel at the first church of our Lord Jesus Christ. And no matter where you go in the whole world, mm -hmm. and no matter what language it's spoken in, they all speak the same thing. Mm -hmm. I can't sit here at first church on Fifth Street at headquarters yeah. and not hear the same thing in Australia where they won't allow it to be preached. Right. <laughs> and you can't find that. I mean, I would hate to be lost and being in this building and after all these years and all of my church going. So there are, there are. Pastor Jennings preaches what's in the book. That's what he preaches. Where are you going to go with that? If you're, if, if, you're, if you're a preacher and you're teaching the gospel of God and you're not preaching what's in the book, mm -hmm. I'm almost speechless to speak for, for that preacher that's preaching the gospel. No matter how many members you have, no matter how, many, how much money you have, because if you're not preaching what's in the book, according to the book, I mean, we as people, to, to any minister, we as people, whether we listen or not, we deserve to hear the truth. Mm -hmm. If you're not teaching me the truth, according to the Bible, no matter where I am, you're robbing me mm -hmm. of my journey to be with God, mm -hmm. to be with, and that's wrong. 
And that's all I can say, you know. A lot of people watching my face and all this, it might be the most important interview of my life. And like I say, like, like what's her face is, um, the lady with Hasarius, Esther. Esther, yeah. I'm here and I'm naked before the Lord. I'm naked before God. I'm naked mm -hmm. before, can't hide nothing from him. Mm -hmm. And for all of you that are watching, watching this, I say like Esther says, if I die, mm -hmm. let me die. Because, you know, I, I do what I do to make a living, but my heart is here and I just don't want to be lost. When God comes back for this body, because he's coming, and I want everyone to know out there, I'm going to leave here. I will not be here for the rest, for eternity. And when I leave here, I better be ready. And I can tell you something, you're going to die. Every one of you watching my face, you're going to die. So true. You want to find some place. You want to find where do you want to be when you die? That's what I'm, you know, look, this, where do you want to, I, I don't want to be lost. I don't want to die in this present state that I'm in. I want it to be better. I want, when I leave here, because the minute they, they say that God is a spirit, and when this flesh drops to the ground, the spirit's going to rise. I think the spirit's going to see another spirit. What are you going to say? Yeah. What are you going to say? Yeah. And that's what, you know, no, I don't sleep easy at night, no. Hmm. As long as I don't have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue after 25 years, no. Yeah. I'm not at ease. I'm not at ease. Yeah. Praise the Lord for Pastor Jennings. Praise, praise the Lord for Pastor Gino and what he preaches from that book. Because those words come directly from God through his mouth to our hearts to let us know if we want to be with him, we've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And anybody that don't want to do that, and if you're not doing that, and, you, and, and someone is showing you to do that, and you're not doing that, don't expect for the Lord to come mm -hmm. and take you with him when he leaves, you might be good. You might be good. God's going to, you know, he's, he's going to, you know, the first resurrection, that's where you want to be. But if not, he says, only scarcely a few of us will get there. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to be lost. Mm -hmm. You know, I, to have the opportunity to, to be here and, and, to, um, and to, to speak. Because mm -hmm. the first church has never asked me to say anything. Mm -hmm. And when I was asked to do this, I know it wasn't the first church that asked me to do this, that God has asked me to say something on his behalf. Not that he needs me, because he doesn't need me. I need him. And I know that I was asked. And so here I am. Here I am in front of the entire world, you know, talking about the Lord, talking about, talking about God talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. People say, Jesus, Jesus. Okay, you can say it all you want, but if you're not listening, and I, I'm not condemning anybody because I can't speak without speaking to myself. Because you can say it all you want, but if you don't, if you're not living the life, you're not going to go with him. Yeah. And I understand something else about being H-O-L-Y. Holiness has a meaning. It means to obey the Lord. That's what it means. I yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You want to be holy? That means you're doing what God wants you to do. And if yeah. you're not holy, work to be holy. Yeah. That's all I know. I work to be holy. I do try. I, I, you know, I fall short and I cry and, I, and, and mm -hmm. it says, let it go. Whatever it is, let, let it go yeah. so you can go with God. Yeah. This suit that I have on, and shoes that I have on, when I die, I'm not taking it with me. Nothing. And you're not taking it with you either. And I, it's, it's, yep. that's all. Thank the Lord for Pastor Gino. And, um, and what I've learned from him in mm. my lifetime, 
and I don't want his words, I don't want the words that come from God through him mm -hmm. for me to be lost. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm just, yeah. you know, this is, my, this is my time, you know, to speak to all of those. Mm. If you have any interest in your soul being saved, you want the truth. And, if, yeah. and, and anybody who lies to your soul, get away from them. Because all the money you got out there, all the money and all the fame that you have, you can't take nothing with you. Nothing is going to go with you. And I, you know, I hate to let those trinkets go. You know, I, I really do. I'm honestly speaking. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I don't want to leave the mansion. I don't leave the, the cars and the, and the nice things and all the everything. But in reality. Mm -hmm. The Pope left this world. Mm -hmm. Everything in Rome is still there. Exactly. You can't. Exactly. No. Can't take anything. It, it's. Yeah. Well, it's just, just like the scripture says, brother, it? the scripture says we brought nothing into this world. And it says it's certain that we can't carry anything out. So the words you're saying are absolutely true. And for all of the, the periods in your lifetime when when sex is at its at its fullest and temptation is at its de most dangerous like i see young people in the church and i'm just so pleased to see young people have control mm -hmm. i didn't have that control when i was coming up mm -hmm. didn't have that mm -hmm. rampant i didn't have that yeah and uh, it's it's here but someone has to teach it. Pastor Gino teaches it. Yeah. You know, and there's a lot of people, you know, the devil's in the church, that's where he is. Yeah. If we go back to your baptism, um, can you remember who baptized you? Do you remember? I think you did. Not sure. Brother Gibbs may have been Brother Gibbs. Brother Gibbs? Possibly, yeah. Brother Gibbs. Yeah. And I think about Brother Gibbs. Yeah. I think yeah. about him. Yeah. You know, you have to have the Holy Ghost to baptize somebody. Mm -hmm. And I haven't seen him in the church in years. Mm. I can't understand. I, I'm not really, I can't understand. I'll tell you, Brother Dan, mm. if I had the Holy Ghost, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even know how to behave myself. I'd mm. just sit and, sh I'd mm. sit and shut up. Because mm. I didn't, wouldn't want to lose it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how I would do anything if I had the Holy Ghost to let it get away from me. Yeah. Yeah. And he baptized me and he left. Mm. I I don't I don't well yeah. I'm well, trying to work it out. Yeah. After your after your baptism, um, or even before your baptism, how did the saints receive you? How were you how were you treated in your eyes? Just like yeah. everybody else. Yeah. That's what I like it. Nobody pays no attention to that. Mm. If they do, I don't know about it. All mm. I know is that I'm so glad to be a member in the church. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad to be here among the saints. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad to be just a number here. I don't know what they're thinking, but I, I'm just glad to be here. I'm just glad that I'm in the right place. And, if, and, I, and I, don't want, I don't want this thing that's about me to slip away. I don't want it to. I'm starting to be very defensive of anything that's wants to take away the holiness a little bit that I've grabbed to hold on to and I don't want to let it go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And every time something comes up, I have to ask myself a question, should you do that? I said, no, I can't do that. Yeah. Okay, no, don't do that. You know, it's like, it's like there is a, an angel of obedience watching me and say, ah, 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 don't do that. Ah, ah, don't say that. Yeah. Yeah. Don't look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Constantly you, being warned. Huh? Constantly being mm -hmm. chastised about. You know, the thing is that I just, I just discovered, brother, brother Dan, wrong is so easy. Mm -hmm. It's so easy. Yeah. It's so easy to slip into something wrong. It's so easy. It's so easy. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, can you describe for those that are watching um, a little bit more of how 
the preaching of the gospel has changed your life. I mean, you've described some of it. Can you speak a little bit more about additional challenges or perhaps um, how do you think things would be later on for you as you continue to, uh, to walk with God? You know, I, I, un, I, I, the gospel that's being preached mm -hmm. is a constant reminder to let you, to, the, const, the preaching of, God, of the gospel is a constant reminder to let me know that I'm not going to be here forever. Yeah. That this life is going to end. And the preaching of the, the truth of the gospel is telling me to prepare myself for the other life that's to come. If I live 140 years, the gospel is teaching me that at the end of that life, there's another life that's going to be for eternity. Where do I want to live that life? Do I want to live it in eternity with the Lord? Or do I want to live it, the life in eternity in damnation? Do I want to do that? That's what the gospel teaches. It teaches for me to people that hate me, and I know they do, it teaches me to smile upon them and be nice to them. Mm -hmm. The people that don't want to have anything to do with me, be nice to them. My wife, I treat her with respect. I don't get in her face anymore about anything. My children, mm -hmm. the same thing. The people that I work, the gospel teaches you all of that. Yeah. You know, it teaches you how to treat a woman or a man that's, if you feel bad vibes from them, don't say nothing. In traffic, you pull in front of somebody, they beep the horn, and they stick their finger up at you and say nothing. Mm -hmm. I, the gospel teaches me to be G-R-A-V-E. And I think about the grave. The grave is dead, people. Mm -hmm. That's what the gospel teaches me, to be dead while you're alive so that the things that come at you should not affect you and you should try. That's what the gospel teaches me, mm -hmm. you know, to respect the other person, no matter what. Don't get upset with them just because if you do that, when I do that, I realize that I can get through the day a little bit better. Yeah. Gospel teaches you that. Pastor Gino is, you know, he, to me, he's, when God comes to Pastor Gino and teaches and talks to us, you sit there. When you come to church, you come with a box mm -hmm. full of energy. And when you leave, something goes in the box for you to take away with you. Mm -hmm. you, you, come, you come full, and when you leave, you have something else to put in there to help you even more. That's what this does. Wonderful. I realize that the message of holiness, you know, I, 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 sometimes you don't pay attention to detail, and the religion of God is right on the cover of the Bible, and no one pays attention to it. It's right on the cover, mm -hmm. and no one pays attention to no it. No attention. It's yeah. right on the cover. It says yeah. H-O-L-Y. Yeah. It's right, and then it says the Bible, mm -hmm. or scriptures. Mm -hmm. It says Holy Bible, Holy Scripture. God wants us to be holy. He wants us to be obedient to the word. My definition is the Bible. Holiness means to be obedient to the word. Yeah. The word is God. Well said. That's it. Well said. Well said. <laughs> if we go back to, a, well, well, clearly I can see that you know, your life has been tremendously affected by, by, the, by the teachings of Scripture and by the pastor's Jennings' delivery. Um, but let's go back a little bit further to when you just got started and how you sort of helped to move this along. Because I can recall back when you came, uh, I don't think uh, the truth of God was on the air yet. 
in terms of television. We had a radio broadcast at the time, um, but I don't think we're on the air. And I think I can recall you and I having conversations back then about this needing to be on the air. Can you well, describe for those who are watching how you helped with that and what you did to get it started? Know, what happened was, is that I'm sitting there, after I got baptized, I'm sitting there. Mm -hmm. Now, I've had some very, you know, good experience in, in the Baptist religion and being in the Baptist, being a Baptist from a kid growing up, hearing everything. I mean, I thought when I was 12 years old, I was going to be an angel. <laughs> you know, I, I, I used to lie in the field in South Carolina under a tree and just kind of, I felt God all around me. I was very young, I felt that. Hmm. And I listened to the word. The, I think the most heartbreaking experience for me when I was a kid is watching Jesus Christ die on the cross. It had a terrible effect on me. Hmm. I, you know, and, you know, and I had a terrible effect that Jesus Christ was, was, was crucified and, and saw him on the cross in these movies and him being, being killed there hmm. had an effect on me. Hmm. And I, every day, I wrote a song about it, but it's always been having an effect on me. And, and then hearing, coming to church after I got baptized and here, Pastor Gino, he's preaching this, preaching this, preaching this. So one day, I just walked up to him. I says, you want to put this on television? He looked at me. He says, yeah. That's OK. Because I know from Bishop Johnson that watching TV was one of the things that was taboo. And so I knew at that time from what I learned from Hannah mm -hmm. in, when I was working with her that TV was taboo. So I, I was listening to the same gospel. So I said, Would you, you want to be on TV with this? He says, yes, Brother Dan, I don't know where the money was coming from. <laughs> I didn't know where the TV station was. I had no idea. I think I, I asked somebody about it, and I went to a, a place on Delaware Avenue. Pax TV, I think it was. Yeah, Pax I TV. went upstairs and talked to them. I think I met Ron Skoleski there. And they say, yeah, it's going to cost blah, 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 blah. So, OK. So I got up some money. My wife got on my face, where are you going to get the money to do this? What are, you, are you crazy? So and so I said, I said, it don't matter. I said, something's going to happen here. Why? I said, the word that's coming out of that man's mouth, the world needs to hear about this. Because like I said when I was 17, now that man is right. If I have to be that good, I'm just going to go to hell. Mm -hmm. But by the time I was 55 and I'm listening to the word again, I said, you know, people need to hear this. Mm -hmm. And that's how it began. Mm. And for years, I went out and worked to make it happen until I ran out. But the, it was like siphoning in a hose. <laughs> Yep. All of a sudden, it caught on by itself, and, right. I, and I was able right. to be, be spared, you know? But that's how it happened. Yeah. And I just watched the ministry grow and grow, and then other people came in, and the internet came in, and other things came in, and all of a sudden, the gospel starts to grow. Yeah. But the thing is, is that what's making this gospel happen is truth. Mm -hmm. It's the truth of it that's making it happen. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. And, and, and like I said, no matter who you are and what you're practicing out there, you need to know the truth. Whether you listen or not, yeah. you need to know your position with God. Yeah. You want to know your position. Or I want to know my position with God. My position is God tells me right here where I'm at on the scale from 1 to 10, where I am with God. And mm -hmm. anyone else, listen to this gospel. Yeah. And you will know where you are. Yeah. No matter whether you're just going to church or if you're a preacher <laughs> listening to this gospel, yeah. you know the truth. You know, and you know, and you, and you, you know, you, we can't do it for money. I know money's important. You got to eat and you got to live. It's important.
But at the same time, where do you want to go when you die? Because you're going to die. Yeah. Where do you want to go? Where do you want to go when you die? Because once you die, you it's not say, when they say that Brother Evans just died. Okay. When someone dies in the first church, they say, Brother Evans has just, wanted, just entered into eternity. Eternity is forever. This life that we live for 90 years, 80 years, 60 years, 40 years, when it ends, eternity begins. Where are you going to be when that happens? That's the question. And that's the fear that follows me in my heart. And if, and if you don't have the fear out there, you need to get it. Because even as beautiful as you are, as big as you are, as rich as you are, mm -hmm. as famous as you are, mm -hmm. you're going to die. Such a profound uh, statement and profound question that you're posing to the viewers. Uh, I hope everybody's listening and uh, paying attention. Um, I, I do want to ask you another question, though, uh, having to do with, because I know you write music and so forth, and uh, most people may not know that um, you, you're actually one of the voices behind the Truth of God television program. Uh, and uh, can you tell us about that song in particular, this, the theme song of our program, and how you wrote that song and why you wrote that song? Well, the songs that, that I write mm -hmm. about, um, the songs that I write about Brother Evans mm -hmm. is the person that I put those together because I can't mix oil and water together. So the first church has allowed me, Brother Evans, to, to sing that song. And it's all about tithes and offerings. Mm -hmm. The song says, what about that house mm -hmm. God gave you? That pretty car, all that money God gave you, your children God gave you. God gave you life, that beautiful face, your blood, your, you know, your breath, your affairs, God gave you. Now, what are you doing for the Lord? All those things that I sing about, you bought them with money. And when you come to church, you don't give God nothing. Everything you have, God gave you, and everything that you have doesn't belong to you. The breath that you breathe, he gave it to you. The eyes that you see out of, the mouth that you talk, the beautiful singing voice and walking and talking and laughing. And God gave you all that. He can take it away because there are people out there that he's taken it away from them. They don't have it. And he's giving you all that stuff. Now, would you rob the Lord? All he wants is 10%. If you make a dollar, give him 10 cents. If you make a thousand, give him a hundred. If you make a million, give him a hundred thousand. What are you going to do with it? Buy another car? It's not very what much. What are you going to do with it? Buy another pair of shoes? Mm -hmm. I tell my wife, she says, you know, honey, I says, what do you, I says, you need another pair of shoes, honey? I, you got a hundred pairs of shoes there. You know? You know, got four cars, we need another car. The song says, give the Lord his 10%. And I, and I, and I will say, you know, as a, <laughs> like a car salesman, although I'm not, but I say to you, that's, that's listening to this gospel, the truth of God, if you're a Baptist, if you're a Presbyterian, any, if, I know you believe in the Lord, and I know you, and you want to do better, and I know you do. You want, if you, if you, if God's got a little bit of this of you, you want to do better, you want to admit that you don't want to do better, but you want to do better, give him, give God his 10%. Send it here. Don't send it to a lie. Send it to the truth. Send it. And not only after you send it, come over here and get beaten up by this gospel because you can't get to heaven any other way. 
But listen, the truth is right here. That's so true. You can't get it. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking for 25 years of experience. You can't get it anywhere else. Yeah. This is where it is. It's so true. You know, and, so and, 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 and for those of you that's, you know, I love everybody. I do. I love everybody. But in spite of my love for everybody, I have to follow this in order, to, in order for me to obtain eternal life. Yeah. It's right here. I can't, I can't go anywhere else. You know? I sit here sometimes, Brother Dan, and, I, and so much things are pulling on me. I think that I don't, I don't even belong in the church. Mm. And when I see brothers and sisters with the Holy Ghost jumping up and down, I just... <laughs> I know... Yeah. You, and, and the Spirit talk, get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, and I'll come in. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it says. Get yeah. rid of that, yeah. get rid of that, get rid of, and I'll come in. Hmm. Oh, you want to come? Do, are, you, do, are you coming? I say, yes, I'm coming. Well, when? How much time you got left, huh? Hmm. You're 80 years old. Hmm. How much time you got left? Mm -hmm. So profound. There's lots of questions. Constantly being challenged by the Word of God. Always. It just keeps, and I can't run from it because it's yeah. the truth. Yeah. I can't. I promised when I came to, to give this interview that I would not say too much of you. Mm -hmm. I got to say I. Yeah. Because all about my walk with God. Yeah. Not your walk, my walk with God. Because my walk with God is different than your walk with God. Mm -hmm. It's about, but the, but, the, but the thing is, is the light's, if my mother sang this song that is danger walking in the dark and walking in the dark is things that you aren't aware of or things that you know when you're walking in the dark, you're going to step in some mm -hmm. ugly stuff and you're going to get hurt because mm -hmm. you can't see in the dark. Right. You know, and I try mm -hmm. to walk in the light so that darkness does cover me. You know, and something else, Brother Dan, mm -hmm. there's something in my life that's bothering me right now and I can't rest. Mm -hmm. It rests on my spirit, mm. and I and I, it won't go away. Mm. And 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 the spirit says to me. I said, "How do I get rid of this? Please help me, mm. please help me." He says. I said, "What happens when I get rid of this? Leave it up to me." And and, and I'm having that. Mm. I don't want to be lost. You know, I, this might be 20 years from now, and I'll be 100, and I won't be here. Well, if I'm 25 years from now, I'll be 105 and I won't be here. And I want this testimony to be a testament to my salvation. Mm -hmm. I want it to be. And mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you know, I want my children to listen to this. Mm -hmm. I want everyone out there to understand. Fun feels good. All the stuff out there that's not godly it feels good. And all the things that you do out there, you want to question the Bible according to what you're doing out there to see if it's okay with God. But I, 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 I want to go, I want to be able to go somewhere so I can hear that. And when I came here, I was able to hear how I need to dress how I need to behave myself so that I will not be lost. And when this body drops to the ground and I go into eternity, I will be do, I'll be going into the light and not into the darkness. That's what, that's what the gospel teaches me here. And this gospel here is the gospel. People say, what makes you think you're so right? Pastor Gino says, no matter what your questions are, Let's see what the Lord's got to say about it. And when the Lord opens it up, you go, okay, I, do you know now? I know. Well, now what are you going to do about it? He doesn't go outside the book. He says, no, no, let's go to the Bible. Let's see what the Lord's got to say about it. Something else he says that's very interesting. The Bible says there's God's many. God, 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 lots of God's many. So tell me something. Of all those gods that are out there, God's got to have a name in order for me to want to worship that God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he says, 
I want to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. If you want to find who God, the name of the Lord, you want to find out the name of God, then watch this program so they can tell you the name of the Lord because I can't hear it nowhere else. It might be out there, but I don't hear it. Mm -hmm. And anybody watching this say, oh, you're, you're with that church. I'm not with that church. I'm with a church that's preaching the truth of God for me to understand so I don't be lost and go to hell. Mm -hmm. And I'm, Brother Dan, I'm working on that. I, I just probably most the most important interview of my life, you know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people out there, you know, look and say, well, you know, that's that guy, that's him. You know, listen, don't do this to me. Pray for me. Right. Don't do this to me. Yeah. Pray for me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm your brother. Yeah. Pray for me. Yeah. Pray that I don't be lost. Pray for me. If you, you see me, you recognize me, okay, but you pray for me. Yeah. You have mercy upon me that I don't yeah. be lost. Like I'm, I'm here because my heart is open for you so that you won't be lost and that your life won't be lost. You know, come here and hear this. All of you preachers out there that are preaching to these people Listen to this so you can give those people a better message. In fact, you have thousands of people that come and watch you. They deserve more than what you've given them. How much money do you need? Mm -hmm. I always say that at the end of the month, mm -hmm. if the bills are paid, mm -hmm. it's the richest you can get. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Can't get richer than that. Yeah. If the bills are paid, so how much money do you need? Mm -hmm. How many airplanes do we need? How many mm -hmm. cars do we need? And I'm, and I, I can't say nothing. I got cars. I, 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 but, but you know, I'm here. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. You know, yeah. God doesn't say very much about a rich man. He doesn't. I read about him. Mm -hmm. You know, but I always say, I said, Pastor Jennings is is rich in in the gospel. Yeah. God gives him things like He gave to Job. Be, yeah. But but you know. You know, you, you, I try to put God first yeah. Yeah. in all that I do. So no matter what you do out there, you, you can do anything you want to do, but we're go I, I keep saying it, we're going to die. Mm -hmm. And when we die, there's nothing we can do. I fight hard to keep my house. I fight hard to keep this and keep that. And, and then I stop and ask myself, You're going to leave it here, Ernest. What? You're going to leave it here. And someone else is going to wear all those shoes you have, and someone's going to get the car and whatever else. And you know, so what about your soul? Mm -hmm. What about your soul? What about my soul? What about your soul? I remember that I didn't want to hear anything about God at all. At all. Mm -hmm. Hannah? If that man is right, and if I gotta be that good, I'm just gonna go to hell, because I can't be that good. And then I realized, when that day came, and I was ready to, to get baptized, that voice came to me, and he said this to me. Okay, Mr. Smart Guy, you're in all this trouble, now what are you gonna do now, huh? You satisfied now? You'd rather go to hell, huh? Okay, you satisfied now? And I'm crying and says, don't do this to me. Say, you deserve it. You want to go to hell, huh? You'd rather go out and raise hell and go to hell? You don't want to be a good boy? I was going to stand up and be baptized. No, no, I'm not dressed right to be baptized. I waited till the following week on the pastor's birthday. And I was baptized. And then the, then, and then the war began because I had to give up this, give up that, give up that, give up that. And it went on. Mm. It's still going on. Mm. I'm very close. Mm. Not close enough. Almost there, but I don't want to die mm. in this state. Yeah. And I ask everybody out there that's looking at this, you know, 
pray for me. Yeah. You know, don't, you know, don't look down upon me because I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying to, I want to be with the Lord. I don't want to die yeah. and be in darkness. Yeah, Pray For Me is one of those songs um, that your mother used to sing quite a bit. Um, it certainly is a very true song and it's a song that we sing today. What do you think your mom would say, your mother, if she would see you in church now as the way uh, you were in the past? We were having fun before she died mm -hmm. because um, I came into church maybe four or five years before she died mm -hmm. and we were having fun together. And I remember her, we talked early in the morning, like, you know, four and five o'clock on the phone. She was ready. How you doing? Mm -hmm. We were on the phone, talk about everything. And we start talking about the Lord and she would go into tongue. Mm -hmm. She was speaking in tongue. I had to wait until she's finished. Mm -hmm. And at that time, I used to say, oh, she's st stupid language again. <laughs> she used to have the tape recorder on her, listen to the, listen to the church. Mm -hmm. She used to come to the house and go, oh, oh, hear that again. But I realize now mm -hmm. that it might not be easy for one to accept to come into the, to the truth, and especially coming here. I mean, you might go somewhere else and... It might be a little easier for you, but easier is not going to get you there. You got to come and get hit, knocked in the face. Mm -hmm. And I realized at that point, and then when this hit me, I wanted to go in and, and, and find out mm -hmm. to investigate. Mother and I, and that song, when she was dying, I was singing it on her bed, mm -hmm. pray for me. And I, I, you know, I miss my mom. And I, I wish when she was alive, I could have been a little better to her than I was. I, I asked the Lord, you know, I could have been better. With the knowledge I have now, I would have been much different and mm -hmm. to my parents than I was, you know, uh, when I was much younger. I just didn't mm -hmm. understand. And uh, I know that, you know, the, the evil side of us, because it's in us, the evil side of us is not favorable toward our brothers and sisters and our mothers and our fathers. And the disobedience that's in us does not allow us, doesn't allow the light to shine mm -hmm. on the people that are closest to us. Mm -hmm. You know, we shine a light easier on someone that we don't know than the people that are close to us. Yeah. I understand. I'm, I'm just so, you know, I, it's, it's, it's a blessing just to be in the church and the truth is prevalent continuously and all the ministers speak the same thing. For all of you that, that are interested in everlasting life, you need to be here. In the sound of my voice, you need to be here. This is where you want to be. So you don't have to listen, but you need to know. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to listen, but you need to know. You need to know what it's going to take for you to be with God. Yeah. And God does have a name. His name is Jesus Christ. Yeah. I don't care who you are yeah. and what you're practicing. They say, you know, there's a God in China. There's a God, you know, there's a God here. There's a God there. There's a God there. There's a God there. But they're God, 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 God. Okay, God says there's many gods, but there's only one God. Yeah. Well, then what is his name? Mm -hmm. You want to find out God's name? Come to the truth of God right here yeah. and find out the name of God. I'm not a minister. Believe me, I'm not. Pastor Jennings and, and the men that minister in the gospel with him, they all talk the same thing. So this is where you want to be. You want to know the name of God? Come here so you can find out. You know? well, and by the way, yeah. you know, all those pictures that we see of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. that's not him. So true. Michelangelo painted it. So true. Did you know that? So true. Michelangelo painted it because, you know, but that's not Jesus. I don't know what Jesus looks like, but that's not Jesus. Right. But I'm sure, and if he was that, and if he did look like that, okay, but that's not him. So true. And he, uh, a picture is not a spirit. And I don't know what Jesus looked like when he was here. I don't know. <laughs> because if the scripture says it's a shame for a man to have long hair, <laughs> then what is Jesus doing with long hair? Right. 
I, I, so well, you've got to understand that. So, right. you know, and, and, and this information that I'm getting comes from the truth of God. So I have to ask those questions. If that's Jesus and, and, and Jesus says it's a shame for a man to have long hair, then why does Jesus have long hair? Right. So I got to ask that question. Yeah. So don't get caught up yeah. in all that. I yeah. remember my good friend, Ali, yeah. he's a good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. and in fact, I, 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 I don't know if I did him right or wrong, but I, I told him how to run his big fat mouth. I did that. Mm -hmm. When his brother, <laughs> Rudy, and they came to my concert, to a concert, and I taught him that stuff. But, mm -hmm. but you know, I think the whole thing was, he, it was because he, um, he didn't understand. Mm. He didn't understand. Mm. And a lot of people don't understand. So yeah. we do the best we can, yeah. you know, but we can do better. Yeah, yeah. Well, Brother Ernest, we, we certainly thank you for, for the time you spent with us uh, for this interview. Um, I was going to ask you to give uh, parting words of wisdom to those who are watching, but I think you've been doing that throughout this entire yeah. interview. Um, if, if there's anything else that comes to mind, uh, I certainly want to give you the opportunity to say that now. Um, I, I just think that those that are, that are listening to this, mm -hmm. you know, um, the computer's here, mm -hmm. you know. It's the truth of God, isn't it? Yep. On the computer? Yep. And go to the truth of God. And if, 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 if anything I'm saying, just go to the truth of God on your computer and, and just check it out. Yep. Okay? Yep. That's all I can say. You preachers out there preaching, you need to check it out. You can't do this to these people and not tell them. They don't have to like what you're preaching. It's about God. It's not about you. It's about God. You got to do this. You, you can't let it go. I, I don't know, you know, God's talking to me today and coming through my heart and I'm doing, the, I'm doing what I can for myself. Not for you. Not for you. For me. Yeah. When I die, I'm going to die by myself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to die by myself. Well, you're going to die by yourself. And you better get it right if you want it right. I don't care how beautiful you are. Mm -hmm. Don't care. <laughs> and you be, guys with your muscles and guys with your brains and all your money yeah. and everything, yeah. fine. You can't do it. With, you, you can do it, but God will help you do it better. Yeah. And he'll straighten, it, he'll straighten out all the mess and, and help you out. That's, that's the way it is. And thank you for having me um, here. And, you know, and people that look at this and, you know, don't do this on me. Pray for me. I love you. All right. Thank you, Brother Ernest. We certainly appreciate your time and, and the words of wisdom that you shared uh, from the heart uh, with, with the viewers and with the rest of the saints that will be watching this. Uh, we certainly will be praying for you uh, Thank continually. You. We ask that you continue to pray for, Thank for you. us also. And pray for Pastor Gino. Yes. Pray without, for him. Without question. Without question. Well, there you have it, uh, another interview, one of the uh, members of the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, Brother Ernest Evans, has been with us for over 25 years now. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode of The Truth of God Insider. like to advertise on the TOG Insider, please call Cindy Rawlings at 252-341-9358. Once again, for advertising on the TOG Insider, call Cindy Rawlings at 252-341-9358. Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost.